Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Success Network with Rushil. Today we have with us Akash Sharma, who is a graduate from IIT Mandi. He has received a gold medal for his academic excellence there and then he moved to work at Microsoft. At Microsoft, he has worked in Hyderabad for five years and then moved into the US recently. Hello Akash, welcome to Success Network with Rushil. Great to be here. Great, thank you. So Akash, our viewers would like to know about your experience at Microsoft and about your journey from IIT Monday to Microsoft and some advice on what their career path should be or what should they prepare for. So let us start with the very first question, which is, can you tell us a bit about your journey from IIT Monday to Microsoft, then moving to the US? Yeah, sure, Rishit. So I joined IIT Monday in 2015. And uh, initially when I had joined IIT Monday, I joined as an electrical engineer. So it was, in fact, at the end of the first year that I switched my branch to computer science. And at that time, I used to have this question in my mind that whether would I be interested more in, say, designing chips, because that was an area I was keen in, or would I enjoy writing software? So at the end of first year, I finally decided to go ahead with computer science. And I think one of the primary reasons was that if in the future I want to, say, do a startup, then computer science is one of those fields wherein you need like absolutely minimal investment. As long as you have maybe a laptop and the time to invest, you can really make, say, good products and start your own company. So at the end of the first year, I switched and I had the opportunity to take some really nice courses as a result. And I think I enjoyed them thoroughly. I did a couple of internships at multiple different places. And in 2018 is... Uh, when we had our placements and that's where Microsoft made me an offer to join them as a software engineer. So once I finished college in 2019, I went to Hyderabad, which is one of uh, Microsoft centers in India. And I worked there, as you mentioned, for a period of uh, five years. And I think uh, it was a great learning experience. Uh, the product that I worked on was like massive and we were a small crew of people. So at times it would be hard to figure things out, etc. But I think it's generally when you are in, you know, say the toughest of situations that you tend to learn the most and it kind of brings the best out of you. So again, a fantastic learning experience there. And during both these times, I think I made some really amazing friends and some memories that I think I cherished in my life. Uh, it was in August of uh, 2024 last year. Uh, when I switched teams and uh, my current team is here in Redmond, which is uh, the headquarters of Microsoft. So I've been uh, working with this uh, new team now. Uh, so it's a new set of people that you have to interact with, new concepts that you have to learn, etc. So it's been a fun journey so far. Okay. That, that is quite inspiring. That's a, like, you have worked hard a lot for everything. We can understand that. So which is the most important learning from IIT that still helps you in your life? I think there are a couple of these different learnings which not only say came back to me during the college time but these are learnings I've had across life but if there was one in particular which I really learned and practiced more and have been using since say college I think it's about the fact that you're supposed to be making the best out of whatever situation you are in so say when I was in school or you know, preparing for IIT, there's always this pressure that comes along with the aspirations that you have, etc. Right? And often, as kids, it's very hard to deal with that. So I used to find it challenging. I think whatever I did and how I did, a lot of credit goes to how my parents would say handle me and tell me that you know it's okay, just do what you can do and rest will just see. But once I was in college, you know there are limited things that are in your control in a given situation. And it's best that you analyze what tools you have and do whatever best you can in that very situation. So whether it be exams or it be placements, uh, I think even if I felt that I could do only 50% prep for an exam, I would do 50% prep and then go and get the exam. So making the best out of the situation was one of those key learnings, I think, that I really put to practice during college and have been doing that since then. That's really inspiring. As I told my audience that you are a gold medalist from IIT Mandi. So how difficult is it to get a gold medal at an IIT, considering the relative grading system and all your classmates being toppers of their own schools? So you're absolutely right that 
I think all of the peers and friends that I had were amazing folks and uh, they were very good at say studies etc as well honestly like I don't think in that period of four years when I was studying there I, I think I never thought about the fact that you could eventually end up as maybe say a gold medalist or whatever so when you went to give exams or you prepared for it there was never that thought in mind I think it just happened at the end of it that maybe I did well so yes I would say it was hard I never thought about it, but I think when I reflect back and think about what are those key things that eventually helped me out in, say, ending up where I ended, was the fact that I did it consistently. So at the end of the first year when we got our GPAs, I think I would have maybe been in the top 10, 15 people, but I was nowhere close to being the top ranker or whatever in college. But I was happy, like I was excited about the fact that I'm going to be switching to computer science. But I think some things that changed over a period of time was the fact that uh, towards the later years, especially uh, I had friends who maybe some of them didn't work hard in one course or they would have left one semester and maybe they prioritized other things over academics. I think I never let go of any courses in the sense that I felt generally more responsible from the perspective that yes, this is a course irrespective of whether or how much I like the content or not like the content. As a student, it's my responsibility to go ahead and study as much as I can, give my exams. So I continue to remain consistent with that. And maybe the consistency was the aspect that eventually made the difference in the end. Okay, so consistency is the key. So that's the message for our it's, audience. And yeah. uh, that's a message for me as well. Had I been consistent throughout my IIT Monday journey, who knows, I might have replaced you as a gold medalist, but... You never know. I think you did very well, uh, I believe too. So Yeah, the, I yeah. guess the third semester went wrong for me. There were some things that I was involved in other than academics. Well, it's fine. I'm happy with whatever I've got. Moving on. Does having a gold medal from an, from an IIT give you an extra advantage in your career? So I think it might be like a little bit related to the question, say, does an IIT tag, for example, help you in your career or not, right? And I think for all these questions, thought generally is that, yes, if there is a process of resume shortlisting happening, then if you have an IIT tag or if your resume mentions that you were a gold medalist at your college, it tends to draw some attention is at least what I think. So your resume might get shortlisted and you might be able to get interview opportunities slightly more easy, easily as compared to someone who is not able to list those things on their resume. But as you they progress in your career, it becomes a lot more about what you have done over the past few years and what projects have you worked on, with which companies are you working on. So that tends to wane more as compared to whether or not you were a gold medalist, say, five or six years back. So yeah, I think maybe your resume shortlisting is something where it could possibly help you. But eventually in the interviews, it's going to be more about how knowledgeable you are and the work that you have done over the past few years. Okay, so it kind of makes for an extra advantage, but not the major part of it. The major part is what you have done over the years. But yeah, it's there's no harm in getting a gold medal at an IIT. So yeah, I get your point. Okay, so in your opinion, what makes IITs different from other colleges? See, at least from my experience, there were a lot of things that have contributed to where I am today from the college perspective itself. And that can include, say, students, teachers, um, and various other experiences that you have at college. I'm sure other colleges are great too, and they also have some amazing professors who help the student out. But I think one of the differences that we might find in an IIT or any other reputed institute is that because of the process of having these hard exams, right, to have students eventually qualify and come to the college, the, the peer group that is formed at IIT tends to be reasonably good. Now, you'll always find a mix of students in terms of their interests in academics, etc. in all colleges. It's just that you might find a higher ratio of people at an IIT who are more interested in investing time into learning things or building things. So I think peer group is one of the most important factors that eventually brings in a difference. And obviously, as a result, you build a very strong network because these people have worked hard to get into an IIT. A good number of them work hard in college. And then even after, say, they leave college, they tend to go and do some incredible stuff. Now that That is obviously, you know, I'm not saying that, say, people in other colleges might not be doing as well, but it's just the ratio maybe is what brings in the difference. 
I think I also felt the same. So totally agree with that. Like yeah. peer group was awesome. Yeah. So what advice would you give to someone preparing for JE exam right now? Okay, I think this is an advice that my parents also gave me. Uh, Try to internalize it as much as I could, but maybe I could have done better as well. Um, my father used to always tell me that you know if you get into an IIT, that's not going to be like, oh, you've gotten into an IIT and you're set for the rest of your life. And if you don't get into IIT, that also is not like an end of life. I also truly believe in the same that if an individual wants to make a difference, they want to grow, etc. They can do it from anywhere and like at any stage of their life. So one of the things that, you know, at least I would like to tell people who are preparing for JE is that put in your effort. I mean, that's your job. Don't underestimate its difficulty. Go ahead and work hard. But just keep in mind that you getting into an IIT or not getting into an IIT is not going to decide how you will spend your life or the impact that you make in your life. And it in no way is a definition of your capabilities and abilities. So work hard, but if you get it, great. Go ahead, go to college and learn a lot because you have to continue working hard if you wish to grow. And if you don't get it, it's totally fine. Pers continue pursuing the passion for engineering. It's an amazing field. Work hard and you'll be able to get to places where any other IITian maybe can get. So that is maybe one thing you should keep in mind when you're preparing and don't take that added stress. I totally agree with that, Akash, because I've seen people from non-IIT colleges doing much better than IITians in their life. Right. So yeah, like. Life doesn't end at the college name itself. You have a huge path to follow. So yep, you can totally turn agree. around the table anytime. Yeah. Okay. okay. So next question. For an engineering student, what preparation plan would you suggest helping them get a software engineering job at Microsoft? Okay. So I think there are two aspects to this question. One of the things that I can tell you is that, you know, I, I don't know if it's fortunate or unfortunate, but there is a certain pattern in which companies hire students from colleges. And more often than not, they're going to come to your college and uh, give you a bunch of coding questions which you have to solve. Right? So I have had friends who have been able to just get very good at solving those particular questions by repeated practice for, say, a period of maybe six months. And they've been able to crack those opportunities. So, yeah, maybe just from the perspective of, say, cracking and a coding interview at a college level, you might just be able to get through maybe with being very good at solving those coding problems and be being reasonably good or like okay at the basics or the fundamentals because there'll be some questions from there. I do believe that as you grow in your career, those coding questions, while they continue to remain important, it's going to become a lot more about in interviews and especially you talk about, say, once you land at Microsoft, then how do you deal with things? How strong your fundamentals are, are going to play a decisive role. So while you can maybe get through interviews or say Microsoft or any other top company, maybe by being good at solving coding problems, I think your fundamentals in terms of do you really understand networking, operating systems, memory management, how good are you? Those concepts will play a difference, at least in the longer run. I feel that in my interview whatever foundational skills that I had built did play a role in helping me get a job at Microsoft it was not just the questions that I solved so at least my advice would be that spend your time at college trying to really build a very very strong foundation or understanding of how things work at the lowest levels and they will eventually help you in life and they will also help you in your interview at Microsoft like at college for whatever company you're interviewing for. And can non-computer science students also get a software engineering role at Microsoft? Absolutely. So, you know, I have had friends at college who've been in, say, several different branches, whether that be mechanical, even civil for that matter, right? Some of these students were not even allowed to sit in placements because of the branch that they were in at that point of time. But I've seen them really work hard. They would take their courses. They would also go ahead and then take up some computer science courses, study from watching maybe lectures on YouTube or whatever. And I've had friends who have gone ahead and cracked multiple offers in top software engineering companies at the end of college. So I think, you know, as I always say, it, it's always up to you as to where you want to get and what you want to do. Sometimes it takes time. Sometimes it takes more effort. You have to put in more effort than others, but you certainly can get wherever you want to be. So there is no doubt about the fact that non-computer science students can crack offers in top 
software engineering companies. Okay. So before closing, I want to ask one last question. So where can our viewers find you or learn more about your work? I think the primary source source of like what I'm doing at the current point of time might be LinkedIn. I do have a website wherein I'm trying to be active in say blogging about my learning. So the domain is sharmaakash.com. There are a couple of blogs there. Hopefully you'll find more as time goes on. But yeah, these are I guess the two places you could look up. Thank you so much Akash for your time. It was great talking to you. I'm sure that our viewers have had a lot of knowledge from your experience. Thank you so much for being here with us. It was a pleasure, Roshan. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.